Shanna needed to improve her rack position. As you can see, the dumbbell is out to the side. She can get away with this to a certain extent with a loadable dumbbell, but with a fixed dumbbell, it's gonna mean that the, the top end globe is gonna pull her out to the side. If we can find a rack position that's comfortable with the dumbbell more pointing forward, when she goes to the globe style dumbbells, she's gonna have a much easier task aligning the center of mass of the dumbbell with her center of mass, which in will turn make the dumbbell a lot easier to control as she applies her leg drive. So just take note of how much of the dumbbell you can see into right now compared to the next rep here after the session. So you can see into the dumbbell a lot more here and you can see that the rack position is a lot more stable and in a much better position to apply leg drive to. Here's how we did it. Like you weren't happy with the thing at England's here. Yeah, like England's like, it's, obviously it's an awkward dumbbell, so I feel yeah. like that affected me more than anything, but I just feel like in comp I've not done as well in it as I should do. Um, yeah. I feel like it's quite hit or miss, like, I could have a few weeks where it's going really well, and then it'll just go to shit all of a sudden for kind of no reason. I think my yeah. positioning just isn't that consistent or not. Like I don't get my elbow high up like a lot of people seem to do in the hand at the back. Mine's yeah. a bit more central, I can't get the right position with it at the back. I don't really know technique-wise if I need to change things. It's more just getting it to sit well. I think sometimes yeah. that, like, my rack position isn't good, so I think that's the main thing. I don't yeah. know if I need to change things, obviously with limited time-wise. So. If your elbow's out to the side here, because that feels great, that's going to be, obviously, feels good for the for the loadable one. But when you go to the fixed one, it's going to, that, that outer globe is going to be pulling you out more. Does yeah. that make sense? If I felt like at Ingles, the position wasn't sitting that well. When I was pressing it, I felt like I was here rather than here. Exactly. Good. With the higher elbow, if we can find that and find somewhere that feels pretty comfy, yeah. I do feel that that'll be more transferable to the fix. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Like logically in terms of, because that's what we're, fi that's what we're fighting. We're trying to get that kind of center of mass of that to, to, to us. Yeah. Which obviously if you've got your elbow here, and the, so imagine where the, where the globes are, like that's gonna be a lot easier to bring to the center line than when it's out here and yeah. pulling you out. It's good, that'll do, drop it down. What do you feel there when you're pausing there, by the way? After a bit, it starts to feel like it's tipping backwards slightly. Cool, and and what are you doing to resist that tipping back? I don't know, I think I'm using my wrist more than anything. Yeah, so what, what we want to try- it's heavy. Yeah, what, what you want to try and do is get that, is, is try, go, go a little bit softer with the legs, right? Because you look you look like you, you're kind of fully locked out there. Yeah. So then you're feeling this kind of bit of tension here and then you're having to calibrate it with your, like you say, your wrist. Yeah, a lot of people move the elbow back. Yeah. You're, you feel like using your wrist. So sit, just go again, we'll go for exactly the same thing, but this time, softer knees, and then just use your, move your legs and your hips around to, to kind of get, you, get rid of that arm tension. Good stuff, have a little rest. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, it feels like it's wobbling more, but I don't need to stabilise it kind of thing. Right. Like my body's just, I think because I'm putting more weight on one leg doing that, it seems to wobble, but it doesn't feel as heavy wobbling, if that makes sense. Right. So I think what, 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 you need, what you need to do is like, if you're, feeling, if you're feeling any tension at this upper body, wrist, elbow, whatever, like it's not, perfect rack position. Yeah. You need to find that position where you're almost like your wrist, in your case, where your wrist can go dead. And you're yeah. like, ah, you might have to like dance around a little bit, but I do feel that just just having a slight bend of the knee will just help you just, just because it, it's only a couple of couple yeah. of degrees, it's really good, yeah? But it's like, it's just, just a couple of degrees and you might find that position. It might be, if it's going back, it might be with your torso, just a little bit more yeah. forward, yeah? Try and I find I'm holding I'm sort of stopping holding my brace as well, which could be why I'm wobbling a bit, just because I know I'm not pressing it. Yeah. But realistically, if you're in the right position, with that weight for you, the brake, you shouldn't even need to brace. Yeah. Because you find that, you're, like, it, it'd be actually a good little drill to do as you warm up dumbbell, mm. is actually focus on the anti-brace. 
yeah. like and actually think, get it in position, relax my hand, relax my wrist in your case, don't, don't brace because you don't want that brace to cover up, you don't want yeah. the brace to make it feel easy yeah. just because you're bracing. Yeah. Yeah? You, you want to you actually feel it if it's like slightly out. Yeah. Yeah? So let, let's go again and fo focus on rela relaxing a little bit. Just see if you can find a, a better position. Only, only you know. That does look, that does look better. It looks more still. Yeah. Yeah, I don't feel like it's moving as much. Right. Good stuff. So the, that that's something. Exactly. So the the elbow should be the the last thing in the chain. Yeah. A little bit more weight through that right leg. That's it. Good stuff, drop it down, have a rest. That look that does it does look better. It looks like it's gonna feel yeah. the position feels okay, but I think I need to like I said change from my legs. Like I feel like I'm almost not putting any weight on this leg, and then I'm not gonna be able to drive that way, but it literally feels like I'm not even pressing it to this side, just look, feels like I'm stood like that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think I need to change that a bit. But how how did the rack position go? It did did yeah. it? It just didn't feel like I, I had anything to press with that's more where my legs and hips were. Right. Yeah, cool. probably both felt like it felt the same as there in terms of like it didn't feel harder or when I've tried to put it there before it felt like there's no way I can press from here. Brilliant. Right? So that so that that's what you need to think with your, your technique, you need to think of it as a continuum. Yeah, you need to think rack. Once you get the rack, that's a prerequisite for the dip. Yeah. Obviously. Then the dip, you need to get the dip sorted. So basically controlling the eccentric and maintaining that rack throughout yeah. before going into the drive. And then the press, and then the jerk, then the jerk. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've established that, uh, don't, don't try and you can't rush it. Yeah. And I know you think, oh fucking hell, got to got to comp in a couple of weeks or whatever. But th this might be a thing that you change for OSG to be honest. Yeah. So the comp is going to be like it'll go where it goes on the day. It's not something I think we've yeah. thought it's just going to go where it goes. But well, you've got to think now because probably what we'll what we'll, what we'll say now, right? That feels better. That feels a little bit better in terms of your you're not your wrist isn't stabilising. Yeah. Yeah. But you'd probably say, right, let's go to do, do a working set of your jerks. Let's go for a set of five, touch and go. Mm -hmm. and it might be it'll probably be all over the place. Yeah. Probably be worse. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've got to look at it. You, you can't base your success on right putting it all together. You've got to think right rack versus rack right yeah. now. Yeah. When you're doing your normal rack. You put the, you do your working sets. Your working sets are still going to feel better at that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like taking two steps back to go five forward. Something like this. I think it needs to be a lower volume, or I can focus on like one, two, maybe three reps. If yeah. it gets over that, then I'm just going to go back to that position. So I, I think what you should do with you, probably, probably do this after. Like, do your working sets where you, you're hitting your right pre prepping for Arnold's. I'm going yeah. to commit to my best technique because you're already really good. Yeah. Um, and then probably do like an extra 10 minutes afterwards yeah. where you're drilling this kind of new technique, if you will, yeah. where, where it's just the rack. And you get that, and, and don't rush it. Just get that, get that rack feeling. Ah, oh my God, this feels so much better now. Yeah. But the dip mechanics are gonna be slightly different and the drive mechanics, so don't try and skip steps. Don't go, right, the rack feels better now, let's go to the press. Yeah. Just, go, just re the the dip when you feel like, get to the bottom of the dip, feels exactly the same, my wrist isn't moving, mm. yeah? Then we'll think about putting the drive in. Yeah. Yeah? But, but don't try and skip steps because then, then, then you will just at risk. I know what you're like in terms of, you'll just think, oh, it feels shit when I go to press, so yeah. I'm just gonna stick with my old technique, yeah? yeah. So stick, stick with your strongest position for the Arnold and then probably do this stuff afterwards and we'll, we'll change it completely yeah. for the, to the OSG, but that rack looks not just better and more kind of stuck to this center line, but it also looks without focusing on the elbow position and where the elbow should be, and actually just getting the dumbbell pointing and yeah, so I'm not thinking about my elbow, I'm thinking about putting the dumbbell here. Yeah, so if you compare the videos, like imagine that's the globe thing, you're more the, the thing, the things like that, the dumbbells like that rather than like yeah. that. So you're going to be less likely to be pulled when it goes to a glow, yeah? Right. Yeah, that looks really, really good. 
It don't feel like it's digging in there as much as normal. Hallelujah, as well. because you, because you, you, it, it's the whole thing's more central. Yeah. So it's getting. Well, have a little rest. So it's getting away from this thing. This is the. the to be honest, this is the biggest error I see in intermediate to advanced people on dumbbell people who are lifting good weights they're not new to it is is using the out using the forearm to prop up to yeah. to keep the rack position the it, with exactly the so it is going to be in contact with there but it shouldn't it shouldn't yeah. hurt i also got all the weights there like yeah well, exactly really my shoulder or anything, so just because you logically thinking about your your um your your Right, that's the, the questions that you've asked today are about like what should we do with my elbow? And yeah. because you're using you're you're thinking about moving your elbow, like you're actually forcing your elbow up into this dumbbell yeah. to give yourself the illusion that you've got a really good rack position. Yeah. Whereas actually just kind of changing the angle of the dumbbell a little bit and then just go, go wait just go go soft softer softer the leg so you can kind of calibrate that little bit rather than calibrating with this and your wrist yeah yeah that that's the that's the big the big change you want to find that kind of spot where it goes dead here yeah and then calibrate with here you feel you feel your wrist your, your, I guess that's it's always felt a bit weird feeling well weightless because I almost feel like I can't press it but that's how all pressing feels anyway if it just goes off one side and it's like a fear of dropping on my head or something I think that's why you sort of mess with it a little forget bit. about that yeah like and and that's where you need to be patient with this. But no, I know it's tough. But that's what you need to find logically. You need to you need to just take take a step back and think. Compare the rack to the rack. Yeah. And wait till you feel you know instantly straight away you felt like yeah you know what this feels a little bit better. But because you're trying to rush steps, your next thing in your mind is, but I don't know how it's going to feel when I try and when I yeah. try and do my when I try and do my full reps. Don't think about that. Just go rack to rack. Yes, it feels better. Yeah. We might even be able to get the dip to feel better today, yeah? But it's going to take you, I reckon, like four or five sessions, and it'll be like, oh my God, it feels yeah. so much better and so much more consistent regardless of the, the dumbbell yeah. because you've got the thing less out I think for when it's like a long, longer handle, it throws me more because it sits in a different position, but then there's more weight on me as well, so that sort of messes me up a little bit. Yeah. And then when I'm doing close to overhead, because I'm here, I'm sort of turning as I go around on the high reps, I'm literally looking at a completely different Let's try this time. Find that rack, and I want you to act actively focus on not bracing. Okay. So we're not, you're not trying to create tension there. We're go, going anti-tension, yeah? And if, you, if you're not strong enough to do, you are strong enough to do it with that weight, we're just, you could, should be able to hold a conversation. Yeah. Because that's going to give you the better feedback of whether you're in the right position. So this time, find the rack, three or four second pause. When you feel you're in the best position possible, just, just do a really, really slow eccentric to the bottom. Yeah? And then stand up to the top, but don't, don't fully lock out. Yeah. Want you to try and what, what want you to try and do is pat, repattern yourself to. We'll do a set of three, really slow on the way down, and then up like three quarters of the way up. Yeah. Then go back down. And what I want you to do is actively keeping the whole system relaxed, so we get a bit more fatigued than we usually would if we were bracing. I want you to think about actually making your legs work. Yeah. And keeping your wrist and this forearm kind of relaxed. Yeah. yeah? So go as slow as you can with the tempo to, to get that. Looks good. Slower. Very good. Pause at the bottom. Hold it there. How does the wrist feel? I feel like I've not really like got a good enough grip on it, like it's moving position a bit. That's fine. You don't need a grip on it. Mm. You don't need a grip on it because all you're going to do, especially with the your timing of the jerk, is you're just going to catch it a lockout. You don't yeah. need to fucking grip it. That's the key. Like sometimes you can have too much of a good grip on it, and then it pulls you into yeah. pressing. I think just as a dip, it feels like it's moved. Like there's more pressure on my elbow than my wrist as a dip. Yeah. So what? Like what's the, position a little bit. There. Exactly. Yeah, it's changing position, so it's the skill of the changing position. Yeah. Yeah, rather than. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, you say the big handle. Let's turn my music off. You say it's like a thick handle. Yeah. Because it feels like it's just resting. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So you need to, yeah. like, you're not going to be able to squeeze that one. It's yeah. Three inch handle. 
So you've got to trust that you can rest it. You just like if you just it on, your, on a jerk, you wouldn't squeeze the bar. Yeah. That's the, what the more you squeeze, the worse it is. It's all about the torso. Yeah. The uh, like, say you log, you look, <clears throat> you do slow mos of your log log position. Say your log power jerk, where you rep eighty or your axle. Why why you why you are so amazing, technically, and also why the elbow sleeves are redundant is because your rack position is like like elbow sleeves won't really make a difference. Yeah, to they because, make it worse on those. Yeah, because because you are sacrificing the rack position. So yeah. are you are, are you actually like if you think of your log technique and your axle technique, are you putting yourself in a good position where you can produce force with the arms? What, on the axle. Axle and log. It all just feels like weightless and. Exactly, like, but but you're not act the, the way that you do it because your technique's so good in terms of you using your lower body and relying on the rack. <coughs> Is your arms aren't actually in a good position yeah. to produce force. Like if you're going to strip press, <clears throat> say you're doing max strip press on your axle and your log, you'd change your rack position. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because that's, you, what, that's where I feel like I'm going wrong with it. I feel like it is you, my arms and my shoulders when it shouldn't really be. Yeah, exactly. So what you're doing on this is you're taking the opposite approach to that. You're actually trying to put your, oh, you're like, oh, well, my arms, my arm doesn't feel like in a strong position to press. So yeah. think about what you do on your log and your axle. Yeah. That doesn't matter. Yeah, because since I got a decent amount of log and axle, I had to take my elbow sleeves off because I was making it worse and giving me tendonitis and it was awful. Exactly. I don't want to use them on dumbbell, but I feel like I need them or I can't get used it, to them. That, dumbbell's a little bit different because because actually what, what it can make, the, the, kind of, the tension there can just help, help, you, yeah. help you keep that elbow up when, um, yeah. I, I, I think the, the, the elbow sleeve for, and, and I would actually say, as well, it's really important to put the elbow sleeve straight away, mm. um, especially if you're close to comp, because ra rather than it just being like, a, it's giving you a bit more assistance in terms of um, like percentage or weight that you can lift, it's changing the exercise and it's yeah. changing your position. Do you feel that? Yeah, so I've done a few sessions without it on and it just completely feel like a different position. My arms yeah. don't really sit in the same way. Exactly. So that's why I do think, again, you're changing enough today, but I do think like another session, especially when we go over to the fix one, I do think it'd be interesting revisiting the, not, you don't even have to go with a really tight ply sleeve, mm. just maybe somewhere in between what you've tried before and that, because yeah. that, that's just, just giving you a little bit of passive support, whereas the triple ply sleeves almost have your elbows up yeah. here, which you don't want because it's, creating that kind of disconnect and it's hard to feel. But somewhere in the middle, where you're just getting a little bit more than that, I, I think it might, might, be be, might be beneficial because you might get to the point with the, like say that dumbbell at England the other day, mm. with the ply sleeve, you might be, you might calibrate your legs and everything. You might get this elbow in here, like that in the new position, and the globe at the top is still pulling you out ever so slightly. Yeah. Whereas just by, like, imagine the angle here with my hand. Like, imagine if I've got, like, a slightly tighter sleeve on, and I'm just, and I'm as relaxed, but my elbow's here. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that'd be the logic, but we'll worry about that today. Just do, do exactly the same again, and see if you can, see if you can get it to feel a little bit better at the, at the bottom position. That's what you're reprogramming in your head, is we're getting rid of this wrist. That looks really good. One more with the pause at the bottom. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Just really engage with the feeling through your legs and trying to keep that arm relaxed. Right, that'll do drop. That feel any, any different? That felt better. Yeah. So it wasn't like, I'll just keep my hand a bit looser and it felt okay, it didn't feel as vulnerable as it usually does yeah. if it's like a fat hand off. Good. So that's what I'd say for you. So do some, do some kind of drills like, assistance work after your main set mm -hmm. like we said but then what I would say is you as you warm up when you do your work when you before you do your working sets like I definitely recommend the the kind of anti-brace thing put your elbow sleeve on because we're not using that for remember we're not using yeah, that yeah. for assistance necessarily we're just using it so the position's the same whereas like the belt and stuff like that that's we're just actually creating that tension to help us with the mm -hmm. with the lift but, would, but I think you'll benefit from just using the not bracing, keeping yeah. relaxed here, 
keeping relaxing the wrist and the elbow as a great tool to teach you how to get in a good position yeah. without having to expose yourself to like a heavy weight yeah? yeah and then once you've once you've cracked that and even maybe even doing a few slow eccentrics on the dips and get get it going then put the belt on and then start bracing and putting yeah. a little bit more here I would, I would even go as far as to say keep this relaxed all the way through i think you just like we've used the example of the the log and the axle like technique so good because you you do keep relax you 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 look at your upper body tension that you create on your 90 kilo axle when it feels weightless and your 90 kilo log and you've you've managed to resist the urge to push tension through the arms yeah because that's creating that disconnect with the yeah it feels like it's all legs on the normal press exactly and just just like next time you look at your videos back like just slow-mo and look at the elbows and the rack there's no kind of pushing yeah. up there's no kind of elbow drop because if the yeah, if, I if, used to do that a lot and then I got better when that stopped so I think I'm in the same position with dumbbell work exactly. where I was with a press maybe two or three years ago. Yeah, but you just need to use the same principle, exactly yeah. the same principle. Um, yeah, that would be good. So let, let, let Better. Better, one more. Good stuff, drop. That was good. Yeah, felt better. That was a lot better. So the the first one, you had to like being really really picky. You had to save it being yeah. pulled forward. Yeah. So that that's your kind of that's your kind of little indicator there. That that might be a thing where you have to maybe think in your head. It might might just be a one off. I don't know. But the likelihood is that right when it, when stuff's challenging or when I try and produce when I try and go up explosively. Yeah. There's a risk in this new position that if anything, it's gonna it's gonna drop forward, it's gonna drop there. Yeah. yeah? So it might be try and get away from your old way of thinking of right, well if it's dropping forward, what would you what would you usually do, do you think? I don't know really. I've not really thought about it that much. I think it just ends up messing me up because I end up press I end up going for the press anyway and yeah. it ends up out here or here. So and then I'm all wobbly then From the questions you asked, I suspect that if you feel like right, my elbow is dropping forward, I suspect that you might think, right, use the wrist or the elbow to kind of keep the elbow yeah. up a little bit. Yeah? So what I want you to do as your default is right, it's falling forward. So what I need what I need to do rather than thinking it's the elbow's job, it's the torso's job. So if you're going if I'm going if your elbow's going here. The likelihood is that your torso is going yeah. a degree forward. Yeah. yeah. So using the using like a little cue of like say, imagine you've got your back against the wall, and you're just keeping that you've got your your ass and your upper back mm. in contact with the wall, and you're keeping it in contact as you dip and you drive. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas on that on that last one, if it's going forward a little bit, rather than thinking it's the elbow bringing the error, and push, pulling it back with the wrist. Yeah, just think, just think about not not letting the torso clock forward. Yeah. Great work. That looked good. That looked really good. Yeah. yeah that feels good. And that looked like you you actually drove into that 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 last one. You put yeah. a little bit more umph into it. Whereas if you rewind to first rep where we bought, brought in the drive, like that would just that would probably pulled your arm off if you yeah. tried to keep hold of it. Yeah. Yeah. But the the giveaway is like whether you, whether it's frying your head or whatever, like the simplest way to think about it is what you've done comparing that last rep to the first rep where you brought in the drive, is you maintain that torso control. Yeah. Your torso is just going like that. Yeah. Rather than. A little bit forward yeah. yeah and this the dumbbell is a lot but that's why a lot of people will struggle with it is because it's a lot less forgiving if you if your lines wrong yeah yeah um, take the weight out and then let's um, let's bring let's bring the press back in like honestly I didn't, I didn't think you'd do as well as what you've done that was great so go, drop it back down to 33 and then in the the relaxed arm and the brace on this because we don't we don't want to get distracted by make, making that weight feel light. Yeah. We want to imagine, we want to make 33 
feel as heavy as possible in terms yeah. of weight because that will just give you the feedback that you need to a find this rack position first and then it'll it'll just feed back to you you know if you if you if it's the dip that's slightly out if it's the drive that's slightly yeah. out yeah it's going to be somewhere along the somewhere along there yeah come on let's go press beautiful Right, let's go, let's go, go again. Let's just go push press for now. Yeah, so I feel like I want to push press, it's weird going into a jerk. Just think, think of how, how well the push press has improved your jerk on your yeah. log and axle, yeah? But, we, but, but ju, ju, just trying to keep, keep it simple today in terms of, just look at, just look at is it the progression continuum that we've done. Just look, it's the, dri it's the drive, but where you did the drive and you kind of put the brakes on, yeah. don't put the brakes on. Don't put the brakes on, tension once, up onto your toes, and that's just gonna hold us accountable to really driving up through yeah. the legs. Then we'll go to the jerk once you, once you nail this, yeah? Beautiful. Yeah, it feels better as a push press, but I can feel the movement better. Yeah. This is a jerk, I feel like I wanna put my arm go out. Brilliant, come on, let's go, let's go set triple touch and go. Oh my word. Beautiful. When you're here, like that, you, you, your arm feels stronger. There's more tension when your arm's like this. Yeah. yeah to, if you had to strict press than there is here. Yeah. There's, no, there's, there's no tension here. So, so logically it feels like, well, this feels wrong. Yeah. But, but, but what, we've, what we've just discussed and what you agree with and using the comparison of your log and your axle is actually we're, we're making the arms, the reason why you've pushed on so much with the log and your axle is because we've made the arms redundant. Yeah. yeah? And that's why you don't work, your elbow sleeves don't work, work that well, whatever for those. Yeah. yeah. So it's just the same thing with this. So you need to you need to pair this thing in your head rather than feel oh I feel more vulnerable in this position. You need to think all oh, right, that means um uh, like like that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because it 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 is going to force you to be better technically because you can't use your arm at yeah. all to get you out of jail. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go again. Let's go and and just see see this tank. That was brilliant. Yeah. Let's see if you can put 3% more power into the concentric. See what happens when you, you put more into the drive, yeah? Beautiful. So good. Yeah, so much better that, innit? I feel less like I want to turn like I do my normal, because I'm like that. Each rep I end up turning, whereas that I feel yep. like I want to be more forward, up facing forward, which feels yep. better. Brilliant. One more set, and on this fi final set, what wouldn't you to imagine with this, uh, this shoulder here, because it's in such a good, good position now, like I want you to imagine that you're trying to drive that delt up to the ceiling, like you're trying to, yeah. you, you're driving so hard through the legs and onto your toes, so explosively, that, you, that you're heaving this delt into the ceiling, okay. yeah? And then the, the dumbbell will just take care of itself if the line's right, yeah? So we're not, so we're getting away. We're, we're, we're trying to reinforce this thing of, we're not pushing with the arms whatsoever. Yeah. We're trying to drive that shoulder as explosively to the ceiling as possible in a vertical line by using the legs, yeah? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Amazing. Yeah, what a difference. It feels so, a lot lighter. It's light anyway, but it amazing. doesn't feel as to it. That's it, and that's actually getting you to think about relaxing in this rack. And it, honestly, that was so explosive, it probably felt like a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you, you're just heaving so much better. Bring the jerk back in and just think think of the same cue. Think about that what's so good today is that that line, that line's the that line's the th the the per yeah. is perfect. So heaving that shoulder up towards the ceiling. Oh, 
push for it. To be honest, I, th I think it, it it'd be I think it'd be easier to do it when you've got a bit more weight on. Yeah. Do you want to try bit, you want to add yeah, some weight I'll now? Good. All right. Yeah, it feels strange because like, I can't feel like, as much weight, but it almost scares me a bit when it gets to here, but then it's up and it, it feels like it. Yeah. Great. Keep, keep adding weight. Because I think that, I, I, honestly, I think if you, if you keep those, you probably wouldn't surprise me if you hit a PB, honestly, if you wanted to. Like, or, or at least hit like a heavyish single. Yeah. And then you've got your objective proof that it's so much better yeah. do you know what i mean or worst case scenario is you see where you kind of creep back to your yeah. old technique yeah. do you know what i mean see where the threshold yeah, is because i just made reps and 40 it's kind of like a safe way which i know i can do no matter yeah. what whereas as it goes on it'll probably get in my head a little bit more and i'll keep wanting to but, that, but the thing is that that new technique now looks so much more scalable it looks yeah. like you're going to do 55, 60, 65, yeah. 70, like that. Whereas that kind of elbow out to the side thing, yeah. as you get heavier, it's going to... I think because it feels so weightless for so long, it feels like I'm almost scared to press it because if I fail it, it's just going to hit me on my head kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that's but have you, is. like... When you move out of the way, don't you? Like, you just... Don't... That's it. And, that, and that, that's the thing, what you've got to, what you've got to remember, especially in training. It's a, it's a really good point. Like, I know at comp, you're going to try and fight it and you're going to get fucking smashed on the head and that. Yeah. But in training, it's that. Yeah. Like, I think mean, that's why I do the other position, because it's slightly out, so if it's going to fail, I've got time yeah. to move. Yeah. Whereas... But, that, but that, that could be a thing that you do in training, especially, like, when you're a bit out from comp, like, just say... When you're doing stuff like this, especially trying to work, taking a skill skill approach in terms yeah. of what you're trying to improve, say perfect or not, I'm not going to grind any reps. Even even if it's a grind, I think I can make it. I'm just going to fuck it off yeah. and let it go. Yeah. yeah. And then that way, like it's going to you're going to feel a lot safer committing to stuff yeah. because you're only going to commit to the ones that are perfect. And if it go if it feels like you you're pressing and it's out here. Anyway, you're just used to just stepping yeah. back and getting out of the way. Especially with the hand a little bit further back, it feels like if you're going to fail it, it's going to tip anyway, so you can dump it down, rather than feel like it's going to tip onto your head. Yeah. I think in that position, it feels like it will tip onto my head, so then, because I stay further out, just to sort of yeah. safety thing without realising it. Yeah. On a few singles. Nice one. So say, say that again, because that, that that's a massive thing. It makes more sense for my clean, because the way I clean, I'll clean it straight forward, so I'll just move out of the way a bit and get it And hit. then you move but your elbow around, exactly. To feel more stable, whereas this is going straight into the position, so yeah. I feel like I don't have to take as long to get it into position. So, th so this is going to be brilliant for the, the medley as well, yeah. because it's going to, every rep's going to be quicker. Yeah, I feel like I, I could call it like half a second off. Right, well, like let, let's go then. Put, put pressure on. Fast rep, fast transition from the... Good. It just takes a bit of time now because I'm getting into the right position with yeah. I need to think not to move it, if that makes sense. But of course it if does. you start drilling that in, I feel like it'll, it'll just stay yeah. there anyway. But that, that's the big that's the big takeaway from today is that, that if you feel exposed in this rep position with the upper body and not feel strong, that, that's good. That's yeah. fine. Because it's gonna force you to like we've established that the rep position's loads better, it's closer to your centre of mass. You've stopped, the, like your question was like, right, where do I point the elbow? Where do I lift yeah. the elbow? We've completely forgotten about that. Yeah. We're letting the elbow be where it wants to be. And we're actually just thinking about putting the, putting the dumbbell in a certain position. Yeah. yeah. So not only is it better for the, the rack and therefore the dip and drive and the press or whatever, like it's actually a lot quicker, yeah. which when you're obviously doing your, doing your medley at Worlds, like it's going to be better. But also like, I suppose like, put, like what Paul's done with changing the clean for instance like yeah. he's improved his clean and just that it's, it's weird because you think that it doesn't make that much of a difference because that's the easy bit anyway yeah whereas actually just making that that each rep a, a little bit more efficient and therefore a little a little quicker like that if your your dumbbell rep is taking three seconds uh, sorry two and a half seconds instead of three and a half seconds yeah. it like when you're five reps deep it yeah. makes a massive difference, doesn't it? Yeah. In terms of time under tension, so. I think another thing as well, when you're further down the line, when, it's, when you're going for like a max or mm. you're getting really fatigued, I think doing what Paul does really well with the, with the jerk, when he jerks it, 
like you're doing more of a push jerk where yeah. you're ju- where you're driving up and then just rebending the knee. Whereas what Paul's doing is just driving up and then just stepping out. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think you'll find that a lot easier. <coughs> Nice ball. Better, mate. You, um, why when you go heavier, you're getting twisted around here? It's because you're used to receiving it. Yeah. That, that's the safe, safe position overhead because that's what you've always done. Yeah. Yeah? So. And when you, I catch you in the right position, it almost sends me off balance because I'm not used to being in that position. Yeah. So, what do you think you could do to get used to the overhead position a bit more? So we'll do some walks or something. You, you could do, or just, uh, it you can do, yeah, logically, it's gr- a great option that people do, waiters, walks and stuff, but I just think, just do a hold. Yeah. Just do, just literally, like, the way that I, I, I like people to do it is just do the last rep of each set, do like a five second, five second yeah. hold, and what you, what you might probably find if you do two or three sets at that at 40, 45, you'll probably just find that you're going like that at first, yeah. and then you'll probably do your next rep and be like, Oh wait there, and you'll find that position that feels better. You d- you're just learning that yeah. that kind of n- new position. Yeah, because it felt good until I did the 47 and messed up it and I turned and I went back to a 40 and it went in a good position but then it just set me off balance because I kept yeah. trying to turn again. And again, what you might find actually is that instead of being being pulled out, you, m- you might just find again, because if you look at where my arm is compared to, if you draw it down to where my feet are, it's out there a little bit, so it is pulling me out here. Yeah. Whereas you might just find that actually just going, like literally that hip shift or yeah. knee shift or whatever, you might just think, oh, it's it's not spinning me as much. Yeah, I think mean like 40 to 45 is a good range to sort of play around with. Perfect, it's, yeah. It's heavy enough to, if I mess it up, I can feel it. It's not too heavy to the point I'm going to risk failing it. Yeah. And now it makes sense to me why it didn't click when we just said move your hand to the base yeah. because you moved your hand to the base and you were like not really noticing difference because I was taking for granted that you were you were like say aligning the you, you were getting the rack position right whereas actually you pointing out today that you're thinking about kind of keeping this elbow yeah. up like it, it makes complete sense because if your hands at one end it's just going to make it fucking even harder yeah, to keep that elbow. Up to like 40, it was okay, but it didn't feel great. But after that, I literally just couldn't sit it. Well. Yeah, exactly. So you have to bring your hand central to compensate to make this not as intense. Whereas actually, changing the kind of mindset in it completely and actually just bringing it in here tighter and then making sure it's close to that centre line. Then you can now you can explore getting the advantage of holding it close to the base because you put hold it there you're going to feel stronger and more stable. Yeah. Um, but you're not having to kind of put your hand further away to stop the dumbbell dropping down. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It'd be good to try my right arm again as well because that the forward position feels a lot more natural on my right than my left, just like mobility wise and stuff. Yeah. Because I focused on the elbow and keeping it back. I just can't seem to do anything on my right, but it just does feel a lot more natural. But I always did right until probably about a year and a half ago when I switched to the left because that position was just far more comfortable and stronger. But I think my right side is still stronger, it's just getting the position that feels better. So I can probably drill that in better on my right. Brilliant.